This week, in a special Take Note edition of Common Grounds, we hear from a group of experts in the fields of education, immigration, and entrepreneurship. The location, Thou Mayest Coffee. Our host, Take Note engagement producer, Tim Holman. This morning, we'll talk about immigration and diversity and what that means for Kansas City's educational landscape. From you all's standpoint uh, and experience, uh, how are schools, um, community organizations, and nonprofits uh, adjusting their programs to be able to account for um, uh, high levels of immigration and, and diversity? So I'm going to start. El Centro uh, was founded with the idea that, um, number one, uh, those immigrants, particularly Spanish speaking, that came into the Kansas City, Kansas uh, area was about embracing. Uh, so for 40 years, we have not only been embracing a language and culture, but we have been really trying uh, to get the, uh, the community to embrace it as well. It's been a hard uphill battle mm -hmm. and even harder since January. I used to be a teacher at East High School as a Teach for America Corps member, um, and now I'm director of Community for the Lean Lab, which is an organization that supports educational entrepreneurs. Um, and we have worked with um, uh, immigrant refugee entrepreneurs, and I think that uh, from so from the nonprofit standpoint, uh, something that I like deeply believe is that you know immigrant populations are inherently very very entrepreneurial. Like they create something from nothing on a very regular basis. Um, moving to the country. Um, and I really like the point that you made about not going towards mainstreaming, not going towards assimilation. But I think especially in education, you know, people see problems within their communities and it's the it's the expertise from within the community that like needs to lead the solution building around mm -hmm. those problems. And that's why um, you know if there is a problem around the immigrant refugee community, especially in education, finding an immigrant entrepreneur, right, who understands what it's like to build something from nothing, but also has that deep community expertise, um, is really, really important. And you just like tailor your programming around that, and you find the value of that, because you know that that solution is gonna be better adopted, it's gonna be much more sustaining, and it's gonna be much more equitable. To our students who are, are native born, um, the opportunities for them to grow up is so much different than how most of us grew up in a, a single language society, and now they have the opportunity to grow up multilingual, and to experience a life that is far different and um, just more opportunities for them to embrace as um, different immigrant cultures come into the system. When it comes to um, providing services for these kids, um, I would say we've, we have the largest ELL population on the Missouri side in the state of Missouri. Um, so we have had a lot of experience and taken had, had many years to kind of figure out what works for kids. How do we need to change? How do we adjust? And in comparison to a lot of our um, colleagues in you know North Kansas City or Independence, um, we have we have the staff that can kind of uh, support these kids in different ways. So for example, at the middle and high school, we have sheltered programming. So teach so kids at beginning and intermediate language levels get support from teachers that are dual certified. And not every school district has those resources. And it's really, um, it's really, it's, it's a challenge for those school districts to, to support those kids. It's an opportunity um, to make sure that we understand that America is not uh, the white male um, normal just kind of, and, and that we start seeing the faces of our young children uh, and realize uh, diversity is here and the more that we can explore and, and, and raise the bar, we're gonna, we're gonna be a better place here.